Hey everyone, Matthew here from Red Flyer Coding, and today I'm bringing you guys episode number four of my platformer game development tutorial series. In the last video, we left off with a player that can move around left and right, jump and fall due to gravity. It looks silly because they can just jump unlimited times, but once we have a collision detection, that'll be fixed. In today's video, we'll be making a little map for the player with a ground and with some walls, and it looks kind of like a bounce house right now, um, but that's just because we're filling it in for, with colors right now. And then in the future, we'll be able to actually just draw textures right here and it'll work all the same. Um, so this would be like maybe like a grass texture or stone or whatever. And this one could be wood or it could be something else. Um, just to demonstrate that all of our borders can be like different sizes or I guess for this for this purpose, they'll be the same size, but they can be different like images and they'll still work the same. So we'll be drawing these today. Let's get into VS Code. As always, that's the wrong VS Code. <laughs> there it is. Um, and the first thing that we're actually going to do is go into our file system here because it makes the code like impossible to read because it's there's no room. Hopefully this is large enough. Um, but we're going to go into our file system and get this out of the way. Within our JavaScript folder, we currently have index.js and player.js. We're actually going to make another file. So I'm right clicking new file and we're going to call it border.js just like that. Okay, there we are. We have our border. Um, let's do some setup here really quick. Pull it up there. We're going to say function border x, y, width, height, and type. Just like that. There we are. And then we're going to say, we're going to set up for each one of these. This dot x equals x. This dot y is equal to y. This dot width is equal to width. This dot height is equal to height. And this dot type is equal to type. So these are all pretty straightforward, x, y, width, and height. But what type is going to be is like the type of the type of border that it is. Again, we have in our solution code here, we have like this red one and this blue one. And I'm foreseeing in the future, we'll have like grass and walls and different things like that. So when we create the border, we'll be able to say, okay, this is grass or this is walls. Or more likely, we'll have our map stored in kind of like a key. And we'll have like zero zero is grass, zero one is a wall, zero two is wood, or zero three is stone, like whatever you want to call it, to kind of make up our map here. Um, so it'll be an index of that sense. So let's go back here, um, and we're going to create a function. So I guess within that curly bracket, we're going to say this dot draw is equal to function, the same way that we did for our player. Um, same thing we had. Back in here, this set draw is equal to function, uh, but we're not actually going to have a step event for the border, at least not yet. I haven't totally decided if the collision detection is going to come from the player or come from each border. I'm thinking it's going to come from the player, so I don't think the border will ever have a step event. Maybe it will in the future, but in this video, it's not going to. Uh, but we are going to add some things to the draw function here. We're going to say if this dot type is equal to one ctx dot fill style. Oh, that's not what I wanted there. Um, it's not auto filling CTX, I think, because we haven't actually added this to our HTML file, which we will before we run our code. Um, but that's why it's being weird right now. CTX.fill style is equal to blue, just like that. And then we're going to say else if this dot type is equal to two, CTX.fill style is equal to red. And again, this is that type variable that we're sending in to tell the game before it draws the border, uh, draw it depending on what it is. So if it's grass, we can draw it with the grass texture, uh, walls with the wall texture. But right now we're just using blue and red because uh, we're not going to worry about graphics yet. That'll be farther down the road. Um, and then it's going to say ctx dot fill rect this dot x, this dot y, this dot width, and this dot height mentioned this in the previous video but this is why we're storing x y within height within each one of these uh, just within the border function because if we just stored it out here then the player x and y could conflict with the border x and y and just better to store them within here but it is annoying to type like tons of this is but that's why we have to type this before everything um, but I think that's actually gonna be it for our border.js file yep that looks good so I'm gonna save this and then the next thing that we need to do is uh, we need to add it to our HTML file because otherwise we're not going to be able to actually access it because it'll say it doesn't recognize um, the border function. So right here we have to add a new script. If you actually just type script and then enter, it autofills that for you. 
source is equal to JS border. There it is, border.js. So this is within our JS folder. It's the border.js file. Um, if you want to set up your file structure differently, you could. But you want to make sure this is a relative link. So do not put like D drive slash games slash platform or game. You don't want that because um, if you're moving your files around, then it'll break it. So you want to make sure this is a relative link as always. But that's it for our HTML file. So we're going to save that. It's probably the last change we'll be making for quite a while to that HTML file until we add like enemies or something else to the game. So we don't actually need that with a CSS. Let's we'll just close out of those. Now we're going to go into our index.js file because if we go into our browser here and load our platform tutorial, we still don't have any borders because we haven't actually added them to our map yet. Um, we've created the function, but we haven't actually called that border function ever. So first we're going to create another game variable underneath player right here. We're going to say var borders is equal to an array just like that and I'm going to switch back to my other screen here of our borders is equal to an array and then after we create the player right over here and we could come before or after we create the player the borders doesn't really matter um, I think yeah I think we'll keep it here for right now we're gonna say create borders and then we're gonna make some for loops uh, and the reason for this is again this is all like kind of hard coding so in a few episodes we'll probably end up changing this and uh, having like an index of a bunch of zeros and ones and twos and and that will determine uh, what kind of what kind of border we actually draw on our map but for right now we're just going to hard code in some borders just so we can test out like uh, if they see it, if we see them on screen and then collision checking for the next video um, so what i'm going to say now is for let i is equal to zero i is less than six i plus plus borders dot push new border and then we're going to say zero plus 100 times i times i 620 100 100 1 okay so this is going to create a ground at the bottom of our map because type is equal to 1 so that's going to mean that's going to be drawn in blue so maybe this would be like our grass or something like that i guess it should be drawn in green but the player is already green so we're not going to do that <laughs> um and then the way this is going to work is it's going to run six times and it'll start by putting one at zero zero because zero plus 100 times zero is still zero or not zero zero excuse me zero six twenty the x coordinate will start at zero the y coordinate will start at six twenty because remember our canvas is seven hundred twenty tall so six twenty zero will be like right here and then it draws this way remember all of the coordinates they start in the top left and they end in the bottom right so it'll draw one here and then it'll draw one here then it'll draw one here and it'll draw six of them just like that so I guess we could save this and refresh the page and we don't actually have our floor yet oh you know what we didn't actually draw them <laughs> of course okay uh, I guess to actually draw them we have to scroll down here and after we draw the player we have to draw the borders because uh, we have to call that draw function within the border so we're gonna say for let i is equal to zero you guys already know I don't like for each i is less than borders dot length i plus plus it all works the same borders i dot draw now i feel like i should use a for each function just to prove that i know how to do them but nah maybe the next video okay we'll save that and go back here and there we are now we have our little floor right here as you can see of course we can still fall through the floor um because we, not, we haven't actually set up our collision system yet that will be in the next video and that one might even be two videos on its own because it's going to be relatively complicated um but i nah, i'm confident we can do it in one video but that'll be the next video but anyways we have our floor drawn in now we're going to draw in some walls so back up here uh beneath the create borders comment we're going to make just that one border that was right here and then we'll make three borders over here uh so let's start with that one border right over here um we're going to say borders dot push new border and the coordinates are actually going to be 0 and 520 and then 100 100 for the width and the height um, and oh, I guess we need to also add the type uh, this one's going to be a type 2 actually because this is a red one and it seems like for now the width and height is always 100 100 and if we ended up going with that for this game where all of our borders have the same width then we actually could just get rid of these parameters uh, there's no point in sending the exact same thing every time but I haven't totally decided yet. Like we could just have one long floor that's 600 wide and the way our collision detection is going to be set up, it's all going to be rectangles and intersecting rectangles. So it'll still work the same regardless of the size of the borders. Um, so I'm going to keep that open right now. If we do want to change the width and height in the future, if we don't, we can always get rid of that. 
And the last thing we're going to do is we're going to add those three borders that were in the front. So we're going to say four let i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, I forgot a semicolon right there. There we are. Borders dot push, new border. And our parameters are going to be 600, oops. And then 420 plus 100 times i, 100, 102. And the reason we're doing that is because it's going to start at the y coordinate of 420, which is going to be right around here, here ish, and then it'll draw this way. And then it'll draw another one here, and the final one here, because um, they're going to be incremented by 100, 100 times i. Just like that. So if we save this and we go back to our code here and we refresh the page, oh, we did something wrong. Hold on, maybe that wasn't right. Oh, we did 400 times 100 times i. I believe we want that to be 400 plus. Yep. Not times, that's a little large. Okay, here we are. So now we have our little, uh, looks like a bounce house set up. Um, oh, that is one error with this, I guess I should say. Or not error, but more of a bug. Is while you're holding down a button, if you happen to like click out, and I guess right clicking counts as clicking out, the game thinks that you're still holding down the button. Yeah, you can see what I did there. I let go of the keys, but it's still going up there. And the way you have to fix it is uh, by pressing the key and then letting go again. It's because the key up, or yeah, the key up like event listener isn't called. So if I'm holding down D and then I click, it doesn't work with that. If I'm holding down D and I right click, it keeps going to the right, even if I'm not holding D anymore. I'm not holding D right now. But that's not really a huge problem because people won't be clicking out of our app very much. We're not going to have them using the mouse, I don't believe. So that shouldn't be a problem. Something to know, though. Sorry, I'm just kind of rambling because this video was actually shorter than I expected. We finally made a short video. <laughs> but anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. The next one will definitely be much longer. It's going to be collision detection. So we'll actually be able to land on our floor finally and have proper jumping. And then collide with the walls. It probably will take a few days to come out because I need to figure all that out first. <laughs> and I have some other stuff going on now too. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, drop a like down below. Comment what you want to see in future videos or for the rest of this series. Comment if you want it to stay geometric and do like some cool color stuff like geometry dash type thing. Or if we should add in textures with like a little character and walls and uh, fuller and things like that. Let me know what you guys think. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.